Question 5. This question is about electricity and chemical reactions. Question E. The electrolysis of concentrated aqueous potassium bromide using graphite electrodes forms hydrogen at the cathode and bromine at the anode. The electrolyte becomes aqueous potassium hydroxide. In aqueous potassium bromide, you will find these four ions, which will then be attracted to anode and cathode based on their charges. Since the electrolyte here is concentrated, at anode, bromide ion will be selectively discharged and at cathode, hydrogen ion will be selectively discharged. This leaves hydroxide and potassium. Therefore, your electrolyte becomes potassium hydroxide. Part 1. State what is meant by the term electrolysis. Electrolysis is the breaking down of an ionic compound in molten or aqueous solution by electricity. Make sure you have these four keywords in your answer in order to obtain a complete two marks. These are some keyword definitions that you need to know in this chapter besides electrolysis. Part 2. State why graphite is suitable for use as an electrode. Graphite electrodes are used in electrolysis because graphite is a great conductor of electricity and most importantly, it is inert. Inert means that it is non-reactive. Part 3. Write an ionic half equation for the formation of hydrogen at cathode. Hydrogen's ions are discharged at the cathode, which gains electron, and are reduced to form hydrogen gas, giving you one mark. When you are writing any equation, always check whether or not the equation is balanced. Since you have 2 H here, you also have to balance the H here with 2. This causes your charge to become 2 plus, therefore you have to balance it with 2 negative. This will give you your second mark. Part 4. Name the type of particles responsible for the transfer of charge in the conducting wires. In the conducting wires, electrons would flow and in the electrolyte, you would have ions. So the type of particles responsible in the wires would be electrons. Part 5. Name the type of particles responsible for the transfer of charge in aqueous potassium bromide. Now, this would be the electrolyte and as I mentioned, that would be your ions. Part 6. State the names of the products formed when electricity is passed through dilute aqueous potassium bromide using graphite electrodes. To name the products, we have to first identify the ions that present in the electrolyte of dilute aqueous potassium bromide. The positively charged ions will be attracted to cathode and the negatively charged ions will be attracted to anode. According to the reactivity series, at cathode hydrogen will be discharged and at anode hydroxide ion will lose electrons and oxidize to form oxygen gas. So the product at anode will be oxygen gas and at cathode will be hydrogen gas. Question B. Bauxite is an ore containing aluminium. Aluminium is extracted by electrolysis of purified bauxite in molten creolite using carbon electrodes. Part 1. Name the aluminium compound in purified bauxite. Aluminium is extracted by its ore using electrolysis. Its main ore is bauxite which contains aluminium oxide. So the name of the aluminium compound in purified bauxite is aluminium oxide. Part 2. State two reasons why creolite is used in this electrolysis. During the extraction of aluminium from bauxite, Aluminium is mixed with creolite. There are two reasons for this. The first one is to reduce its melting point and the second reason is to increase its conductivity. Part 3. The anode is made from carbon. Explain why the carbon anode has to be replaced regularly. The reason why carbon anodes need to be replaced is because at positive anode, Oxygen is formed, which will then react with the carbon to produce carbon dioxide. Therefore, the carbon has to be constantly replaced. Question C. Hydrogen oxygen fuel cells can be used to produce electricity in vehicles. Part 1. Write the symbol equation for the overall reaction in a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. The hydrogen oxygen fuel cell produces electricity by combining hydrogen and oxygen, Releasing energy and water. This will give you one mark. 
The next thing that you should do is always check whether or not your equation is balanced. There are two hydrogen and two hydrogen here which is balanced. However, there are two oxygen here and only one over here. So I'm going to place a two here to balance the oxygen which will then lead to have four hydrogen and I can balance it by writing another two here. This will give you your second mark. Part two, state one advantage of using hydrogen oxygen fuel cells instead of petrol in vehicle engines. You can write any one of these three advantages. Question six, this question is about sulfur and compounds of sulfur. Sulfur is converted into sulfuric acid by the contact process. The process involves four stages. Stage 1. Molten sulfur is converted into sulfur dioxide. This happens by burning sulfur in air. Stage 2. Sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. This process here is reversible. Stage 3. Sulfur trioxide combines with concentrated sulfuric acid to form oleum. Stage 4, oleum reacts to form concentrated sulfuric acid. In stage 4, oleum is mixed carefully with water to form sulfuric acid. Question A, Part 1. In stage 1, iron pyrites can be used instead of molten sulfur. The iron pyrites is heated strongly in air. Balance the equation for the reaction occurring when iron pyrites reacts with oxygen in the air. This should be simple. Let's start with iron. You have two iron here so we are going to put a 2 here which will make your sulfur to become 4 which now makes the oxygen to be 8. Okay, we are only left to balance oxygen and there are 3 oxygen from iron oxide giving you a total of 11 oxygens on the product and only 2 oxygens on the reactant. So to balance this, we can write 11 over 2. However, we are not supposed to balance our equation with fraction so I am going to multiply the whole thing with 2. Part 2. Name Fe2O3. Include the oxidation number of ion. Fe2O3 is iron oxide. They are also asking you to include the oxidation number of ion, which is 3. So that's how you're going to write the name. Question B. The equation for stage 2 is shown. The forward reaction is exothermic. The reaction is carried out at a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 2 atmosphere. Using explanations that do not involve cost, explain why a temperature greater than 450 degrees Celsius is not used. The conditions used in contact process could also be described as compromised. The reason is because the forward reaction is exothermic which means that it is favored by low temperature. However, the reaction will be too slow if a low temperature is being used. So 400 degrees Celsius temperature is used. This then leads the forward reaction resulting in fewer moles of gas so is favored by high pressure. But high pressures are dangerous and expensive so two atmosphere is being used. High pressures also cause sulfur dioxide to liquefy removing it from the reaction itself. So if you were asked why a temperature greater than 450 degrees Celsius is not used, you could simply mention that the yield of SO3 will be less. Part 2. Explain why a pressure lower than 2 atmosphere is not used and the reason would be the same. Question C. When sulfuric acid reacts with ammonia, the salt produces ammonium sulfate. Write the symbol equation for this reaction. When sulfuric acid reacts with ammonia, it produces ammonium sulfate. We know that ammonium sulfate consists of ammonium NH4 plus and sulfate SO42 minus. Combined together, the charge from their number would cross on the other side, resulting in NH42 and SO41. Next is to check whether or not this equation is balanced. You have two nitrogens over here, so we're going to put two here, and the rest are balanced. Question D. Lead sulfate is an insoluble salt. Lead sulfate can be made from aqueous ammonium sulfate using a precipitation reaction. Part 1. Name a solution that can be added to aqueous ammonium sulfate to produce a precipitate of lead sulfate. So let's first write down the compounds that we have. A precipitate is an insoluble salt. To form an insoluble salt, we have to react two soluble salts together. The ions present in your salt is lead and sulfate. You already have sulfate here, meaning that we need to find another salt 
containing lead. Since all nitrates are soluble, we can use this as our anion over here. So the solution that can be added should be a soluble salt which is lead nitrate. The oxidation number of lead is 2 so we should include that as well. Part 2. Write an ionic equation for this precipitation reaction. Include state symbols. The salt form is lead sulfate, meaning that the anions involved are lead 2 plus and sulfate. The state symbols for ions are always aqueous and for the salt form is always solid. Part 3. The precipitate of lead sulfate forms in an aqueous solution. Describe how pure lead sulfate can be obtained from the mixture. This is describing how to obtain the precipitate that is being formed. So we can simplify this process into three key points. Filter, wash and dry. Firstly, filter the precipitate formed. Next, wash the residue with distilled water and finally, dry the residue to get your salt. Make sure your answer have these three keywords to get a full three marks. Question 7. This question is about organic compounds. Question A. Butane reacts with chlorine in a photochemical reaction. Part 1. State the meaning of the term photochemical. Photochemical means that during the reaction, it will require UV light. Part 2. An organic compound with the formula C4H9Cl is formed when one molecule of butane reacts with one molecule of chlorine. Draw the displayed formula of two possible structural isomers with the formula C4H9Cl formed in this reaction. Firstly, we will draw out four carbons with all of their bond attached to it. Next up, we have chlorine. We will place chlorine at two different carbon for each of this compound, giving you two different structural isomers. And lastly, fill in your compound with hydrogens and make sure there are nine of them. Just an extra tip, if you were asked to name these isomers, since the chlorine is attached to the first carbon, it will be called as 1-chlorobutane. And for the second isomer, the chlorine was attached at your second carbon, so it will be called as 2-chlorobutane. Question B. The structure of compound A is shown in figure 7.1. Part 1. Deduce the molecular formula of compound A. There are 4 carbon atoms in this compound followed by 6 hydrogens and 3 oxygens. Part 2. There are 3 functional groups in compound A. Name the homologous series of compounds that contain the following functional groups. Double bond of carbon would be alkene, OH is alcohol and COOH is. Part 3. State what is observed when compound A is added to aqueous bromine. Compound A is an alkene. When reacted with bromine, the solution of bromine will turn from brown to colorless and the reason is because arcing consists of double bond, therefore it can be broken and accept one bromine atom. And the second is aqueous sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate consists of CO3 which will produce carbon dioxide as a product. So you can observe effervescence. Part 4 Compound A can be used as a single monomer to produce two different polymers. Draw one repeat unit of the addition polymer formed from compound A. So let's look at the structure of compound A. One repeated unit could be carbon or this. You are only asked to draw one repeat unit so you can draw either one of these. Last question. Compound A can be converted into a dicarboxylic acid. Name the type of condensation polymer formed from a dicarboxylic acid and a diol. There are two types of polymerization, addition polymerization and condensation polymerization. In condensation polymerization, two different functional groups will react together to form a polymer and water. One is from dicarboxylic acid with diamine, giving you polyamide, and the other one is dicarboxylic acid and dialcohol, giving you polyester. So dicarboxylic acid and diol, which is alcohol, would give you polyester. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope it was worth your time. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.